ever thought about going on an adventure? Not talking about an adventure map. This adventure I'm talking about is traveling to different worlds. I'm not talking about the nether and end dimensions. This adventure has multiple worlds to explore. Luckily, I am a specialist in piloting space rockets. Today's showcase will be Ad Astra, or formerly known as Galactic Craft. This mod is about interstellar traveling and learning the environments of other planets. You can gather resources to build rockets, machines, and many more. And having a semi-realistic experience in surviving in space. Anyway, let's proceed with the showcase. Also, let me answer a few questions before we start. This mod is for Fabric and Forge, only for Java Edition. If you're using a mod pack, your mod pack has restrictions and rules already applied. Which means every mod pack is different and it will not be the same to the video. Also, I want to suggest downloading roughly enough items and patchouli. This will make crafting convenient without asking questions about recipes and develop understanding. The link will be provided in the description. Anyway, let's carry on. To begin with, you will need to gather a significant amount of iron. Yes, I mentioned it, a significant amount of iron. Space travel is costly because it requires iron and redstone to journey from Earth to the moon. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention about the redstone. You need a lot of redstone too. Moving forward. I will explain how to transform iron into steel. All you have to do is place iron in a blast furnace and smelt it. Then you will obtain your steel. This is what I meant when I said it would take some time. In any case, it is necessary to create machines to prepare oneself for space travel. You can begin crafting your launch pad for space launching. You can craft a hammer or use a compressor to make plates. However, the compressor will need energy to process minerals. It doesn't get energy from redstone, but from coal. You must craft coal generators to generate energy to power all machines. Even charcoal works to power the generators. But be aware that you'll need a final way to grow trees in space. The good news, some machines will distribute oxygen to your living space. The bad news, they are high maintenance and you will need to find a method to keep your oxygen levels stable. Otherwise, you will die in space. It's required to craft an oxygen loader. The oxygen loader creates oxygen by using water and energy. But here's the catch. You'll need to craft a spacesuit. You cannot go to space without one. Safety always comes first. Once you craft your spacesuit, you are ready to be an astronaut. However, you must bring food, oxygen, tools, and other essentials to make surviving easier. I'll explain how to store oxygen in your spacesuit. There are two methods. Use an oxygen tank or place your spacesuit in the oxygen loader. Now, let's discuss the rockets. These rockets are ranked from lowest to highest tier. The highest tier is four and the lowest is one. The tier one rocket can travel to the moon or return to earth. The tier two rocket can travel to Mars. The tier three rocket can travel to Mercury and Venus. However, you will need to upgrade your spacesuit for this tier. The tier 4 rocket can travel to another galaxy, specifically the planet Glacio. To create rockets, you will need to construct a NASA workbench. This workbench is specifically designed for rockets. I have heard about an automated workbench. It is similar to the NASA workbench, but you can use hoppers to automate rocket builds. Additionally, it requires energy to function automatically. Crafting rockets can be quite expensive you will need to collect many minerals to build a powerful rocket. Lastly, you will need fuel for your rocket. You must gather oil from oil foundations in the ocean. Use a water bucket to collect it. Remember, oil is a non-renewable resource, so use it wisely. You will need to build a fuel refinery that requires energy to process. Fuel refineries convert oil into usable fuel. Instead of constructing multiple coal generators, consider using steel or dash cables to transfer energy to other machines. Once everything is prepared, it is time to take off. And make sure you bring an extra launch pad and fuel, just in case. When you enter the planet selection menu, you can choose a landing location or create a space station. However, to do so, you must collect dash from the moon. Once you reach the moon, hold the space key to avoid a collision upon impact. Then congratulations, you have successfully 
landed on the moon. In any of the worlds I will be showcasing, you can use various blocks for decorative purposes and encounter different mobs. Remember that each planet has its gravity, so be cautious. To make transportation more convenient, you can craft a rover. However, this will require dash ingots and fuel. The rover can also store items, similar to the rockets. Collecting dash is crucial for building a tier 2 rocket, additional machines, and other essentials. On the moon, it is necessary to create a shelter for yourself. You can smelt moon sand to obtain glass, essential for surviving in space. Fortunately, dash is vital for survival on any planet. Planets. You can also craft a water pump, oxygen distributors, and solar panels. The water pump is useful for maintaining a stable water supply when using oxygen loaders and distributors. However, remember that it requires energy to pump water into the machines. You will also need to craft dash pipes to transport water to the machines. Additionally, you will need a wrench to adjust the output and input of energy or fluids. Once you have constructed your base, it is important to craft airlocks. These doors prevent oxygen from escaping, so create at least two airlocks. Airlocks are necessary for trapping oxygen and preventing water from freezing and fire from extinguishing. Opening the airlocks incorrectly can have disastrous consequences. Solar panels can generate energy from the sun, reducing the need for coal. However, without an energizer, you cannot solely rely on solar panels when the sun goes down. Now let's discuss the entities. We have Lunarians and Wandering Lunarians, similar to villagers who trade items essential for Ad Astra. You can find them underground or in structures. There are also corrupt Lunarians, who attack Lunarians and you, and what they do is shoot ice shards. Defeating them will reward you with ice shards, a mineral useful for renewable fuel. Lastly, we have the Star Crawlers, space sea stars that can do significant damage. When defeated, they drop raw flesh and cheese. As for world generation, there are dungeons where you can gather minerals, paintings, and globes. Once you are finished, place your spare launch pad and use the remaining fuel to return home to Earth. For your mission to Mars, you'll need a tier 2 rocket. However, you'll have to gather Ostrom ingots to complete this mission. This tier will prepare you for exploring Mercury and Venus. Plus, there are plenty of upgrades to enhance your exploration, like the Netherite spacesuit, energizers, cryofreezers, and oxygen sensors. The only creature you'll come across is the Martian Raptor. They are not too challenging, and Mars is quite barren. Feel free to sneak peek inside the Munificent Temples and develop your theories. Let me introduce you to the amazing new additions. The Netherite spacesuit is perfect for your travels to Mercury or Venus. These planets are scorching hot, and a regular spacesuit won't be enough. Fortunately, the spacesuit provides fire resistance, handy for any fire-related dangers. It also has an increased oxygen capacity. Moreover, you'll be immune to lava and magma blocks, making the nether less intimidating. Now let's talk about the energizers. This machine is fantastic for storing abundant energy to power your devices and machinery. Later, you can even craft a jet suit for extraordinary flight abilities. Next up is the cryofreezer. It's a valuable tool for producing renewable fuel. To create cryofuel, you'll need energy and ice shards. This fuel can be reused and is incredibly cold. When I say incredibly cold, I mean it's freezy enough to cause death by hypothermia. Lastly, we have the oxygen sensors. These sensors are primarily used for redstone contraptions, and they only activate when there's oxygen present. Now we're going on an exciting trip to Venus and Mercury. You'll need to construct a tier 3 rocket using Ostrom minerals to get there. Mercury has magma, lava, and plenty of iron. The mobs you encounter are magma cubes. It's like the nether, but in space. As for Venus, there's so much more to explore. There are villages and towers, entities, and another mineral you need to gather called Calorite. Calorite is the last mineral for the tier 4 rocket and the jet spacesuit. You won't need this mineral for any more crafting though. Living on these planets is possible if you're determined to survive without facing any consequences. But be warned, some hostile entities are waiting for you. They may resemble their distant cousins, but they call Venus their home. Watch out for the sulfur creeper, it might give you a good scare. Once you have collected the Calorite, you'll be ready to embark on your final journey.
The final planet is Glacio. You'll discover a whole new galaxy when you check on your planet selection. It's called Proxima Centauri. This planet marks the ultimate achievement in this mod. Glacio is an oxygen-rich planet, so you can breathe safely. The only creatures you'll encounter here are the Glacian Rams, essentially alien goats. The rest of the world is a frozen wonderland with permafrost, deep snow, ice, and abundant minerals associated with ice or snow. As for the jet spacesuit, you can use the energizer to charge the suit and enable flight. Place your jet chest plate to initiate the charging process. However, it's important to note that the energizer also requires energy, so always remember to keep it charged if you ever intend to utilize your jet spacesuit. If you wish to take flight, all you have to do is hold down shift plus space to initiate flying. Just keep in mind that your suit operates on battery power so be mindful of your usage as you embark on your adventures. That concludes Ad Astra. It took me approximately one month to finish this video, during which I made numerous revisions to my scripts, scenes, and transitions. I aim to maintain this mindset to ensure enjoyable videos that showcase my creativity. If you enjoyed this showcase, please leave a like. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.